welcome Dr. Al Malki. Firstly, what specific problems were you trying to solve when you and I first met at the English Language Centre at Taif University in 2017? Well, uh, thank you very much, Peter. Uh, thank you very much for hosting me this afternoon, uh, being part of the Better Learning Conference. Um, um, well, I would say uh, it's been uh, a great pleasure uh, being uh, um, um, representing an organization that would collaborate with uh, Cambridge University Press over the past uh, four years. Uh, I'm not going to call it problems, Peter, but if you can call them like challenges, I would say. Uh, I remember back to 2017 when we uh, met um, uh, at Taif University English Language Center, the main idea was actually uh, um, uh, um, overcoming a challenge, which is creating institutional uh, professional development uh, culture. I think that's uh, a challenge uh, that is there everywhere uh, in, in, in most of the language schools in the kingdom which is how, how actually we can get people involved in, um, in our different uh, PD activities. Uh, while actually surfing and, and reading about better learning uh, this year, uh, I was actually um, uh, noticing uh, one of the main themes uh, there, which is empowering teaching team. And I think, Peter, uh, you and I, uh, when we decided um, uh, about actually trying to work on creating an institutional PD culture, that was for the purpose of empowering a teaching team. That would definitely um, uh, include uh, offering uh, uh, unique uh, PD opportunities and definitely as a result, getting people involved uh, at a larger uh, scale, uh, I would say. Yep. So what's the, what's the challenge then, um, a, a challenge of scale in, in terms of the numbers? Because I, I know there are literally hundreds of teachers and thousands of students. So would you, would you say that was the, the biggest problem that you faced or the biggest challenge that you faced? Well, I would say yes. So that, that was, that was um, a real challenge. I mean, how to not only create uh, a PD, an institutional PD culture, but also getting everyone involved and talking about uh, like more than 250 teachers uh, from different backgrounds with different qualifications and requesting different needs, that's a real challenge. And, and at the same time, you know, um, at that time when we decided to adopt um, new teaching materials uh, uh, produced by Cambridge University Press, uh, I think uh, that was not, not the only thing that uh, we should have been working on. Of course, we worked on other stuff, but also the challenge was um, uh, training teachers on how to use new teaching materials. Not only like tens of teachers, but you're talking about hundreds of them. So 250 teachers um, uh, required uh, 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 actually uh, creating an institutional PD culture that is um, are highly um, uh, productive. So yeah, getting everyone involved is a real challenge. And I think we've been, um, we've been really successful, Peter, uh, doing that together. So, you know, having identified what the challenges were, what, what actual steps did you take uh, in order to address these particular challenges? Well, thank you very much for the question. Um, uh, I think uh, it's uh, it's been it's been done uh, at different scales. I would say working uh, with um, uh, my team uh, at the ELC, the professional development team, and the uh, ELC uh, uh, administration, we actually at the beginning tried to uh, understand uh, different teachers' needs at the at the center. So um, studying the, the current situation at that time, and uh, we actually, I mean, figured out that teachers really need very well-structured PD opportunities. Uh, PD opportunities that are not only uh, uh, just, just, just uh, I, mean, I mean, for no purpose, for no clear purpose, but in order to getting people involved um, uh, very much, uh, PD should be structured, should be planned, should be supported, and eventually should be rewarded. 
so I think I think um, steps start from from understanding teachers' needs, studying the uh, existing situation, and yeah. moving from that to uh, speaking to consultants like people, um, uh, um, Cambridge University Press, uh, with you, Peter, and, and other colleagues, uh, uh, designing uh, PD uh, plans for them. Uh, and then get everyone involved, of course. Uh, let me just give you a piece of fact regarding uh, uh, the, the experience that we had uh, with Cambridge University Press, uh, the, L uh, the ELC. We started actually back, back in the day uh, with absolutely zero teacher trainers among 250 teachers. But as of today, we have more than 80 teacher trainers. And and same number for CELTA holders. Uh, remember when when we uh, also uh, planned for actually offering CELTA training for our teachers at that time. So I think among among two hundred fifty teachers, and you have that number of CELTA holders, that number of teacher trainers is is a real success. So um, uh, understanding teachers' needs, uh, studying the current situation as the first two steps and definitely uh, uh, speaking to uh, um, uh, PD consultants uh, uh, like those uh, at Cambridge University Press. So I, I guess what you've managed to do really is, is, to, is to build your capacity to support the teaching faculty and, and therefore have an impact on learning, which is the ultimate goal. Absolutely. The uh, uh, thing is that now we have uh, a huge and large PD unit uh, at, the, at the Language Center. Uh, with that number of teacher trainers, with that number of CELTA holders, uh, we can actually now be independent in a way uh, that we train our new teachers uh, based on different domains and different uh, competencies that we would like our teachers to to acquire uh, as, as as they go um, remember peter uh, one of the things that um, uh, was initiated between you and i um, at the time uh, which is actually identifying what competencies teachers should have in order to be productive and successful language teachers. Yeah. And I think uh, starting that project, and I'm sure that colleagues uh, back at the ELC at Taif University would, could, would continue that project uh, in which they can also classify their teachers and provide them with the uh, uh, needed uh, training sessions as, as yeah. they go. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so what advice would you give uh, Dr. Mansour to, to an organization like uh, the ELC at Taif University? If an organization was, was facing similar challenges or problems, what, what would your advice be to them? Well, um, I, I think it's, it's, it's um, uh, quite important that um, uh, different organizations or different uh, schools um, uh, need to uh, uh, um, have a plan for their uh, uh, um, teachers uh, in terms of empowering their teachers uh, and teaching teams. Um, I would say having a clear agenda, having uh, something that is supported, that is rewarded, that is uh, structured, uh, a plan that is uh, uh, that can be also um, uh, empowered by, uh, um, I, mean, I mean, consultants like, uh, like people at CUP. I would say that the experience with Cambridge University Press has been really successful. And uh, in order to have the same experience, uh, different organizations need to have very clear, purposeful uh, PD plans for their own teachers in order to empower them um, effectively, I would say. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, there's a question in the in the Q and A box, which I, I'll, I'll ask you, Dr. Mansour, if you don't mind. Yep. Um, uh, it says, "Hi, Dr. Almarpi. Um, I'm interested to hear how you involve the teachers in creating the PD culture that you've mentioned. Did they have a role in the decisions that were taken? Taken. So I guess there's there's two parts to the question. First of all, how did you involve them and uh, did they have a role in the decisions? 
Thank you very much. Uh, that's quite an important, important question. Yes, of course. Um, how did we do that? Um, you know, when it comes to designing, designing and creating um, PD cultures, of course, especially at this at the institutional level, we talk about two levels here. So creating a PD culture at the institutional level, as well as creating a PD culture at the individual level. Right. Uh, when it comes at the institution, of course, uh, it's the administration role. Um, the thing is that we had a very clear PD plan. People know from the very beginning where to do, what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. So that is that is well structured. And at the same time, it's supported. And when it comes to supporting your PD plan, uh, I mean, um, organizations need to, uh, um, I mean, have that uh, time uh, allotted uh, uh, purposefully uh, for PD. And our teachers have that time throughout their teaching hours um, uh, across their, their weekly schedules. At the same time, we should have also a rewarded PD plan. Rewarded PD plan uh, means um, when teachers do something, when teachers are involved in different PD activities, they need to see the result of that PD uh, involvement. Where is it going to take them to? Yeah. Uh, and so that will, will actually um, um, uh, getting them more involved. Mm -hmm. As for the second part of the question, mm -hmm. uh, if you remind me, please. Uh, what, what was their, did, well, not, um, not what was their role, but did they have a role? Uh, in the yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah. we actually have a, have a PD unit. Uh, uh, the PD unit, unit, I mean, its main role is to study uh, teachers' needs. Uh, and so they actually do a kind of frequent surveys, uh, asking teachers, what's your expectation? What do you need? What do you need? Uh, uh, what areas of support that you need uh, help and, and so on? I think that would also give um, uh, administrations a clear idea of what certain competencies uh, teachers need to have, because it's it's inductive as well as deductive at the same time. So that yeah. would be very helpful, I would say. Yeah, I think I'm right in saying also, Dr. Mansour, that at the ELC, there's a, a system of, of lesson observation. Uh, but not lesson observation for assessment, but lesson observation for professional development. Um, and obviously that's that's another uh, very effective way in which you can uh, identify what, what teachers' needs are. And it gives them an opportunity to talk to observers about uh, their, their, their needs. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, talking to teachers, listening to them, uh, getting their feedback every now and then, that would definitely be, be, be very much helpful. Uh, eventually, they, they're going to feel that they're part of the whole story, they, they're, they're part of the whole initiative, and that will make them more involved, of course. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I think we've overrun a little bit. Much as I'd like to go on talking to you uh, this afternoon, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. Um, so, once again, a very, very big thank you to uh, Dr. Mansur al uh, and to all of those of you who uh, joined us today. I'm just checking the Q&A box one more time. No more questions in the Q&A box. So a big thank you once again, Dr. Mansour, and thank you to everybody who's uh, joined us uh, today. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.